Hey there, Salim Rezai here, and today I want to talk about alveolar ventilation. So we all know this equation. Minute ventilation is equal to tidal volume times respiratory rate. Very well understood, but applying that at the bedside is a little bit more difficult. And so I actually like this extrapolation of that equation. Alveolar ventilation is basically the subtraction of inspired volume minus dead space times the respiratory rate. So basically there's two ways we can affect ventilation at the alveolar level. With inspired volume, this is gonna be our non-invasive positive pressure ventilation. But for dead space, this is gonna be high velocity therapy. Now to me, this is a lot more applicable at the bedside. Now, why might I consider high velocity therapy over non-invasive positive pressure ventilation? Well. Anybody who's put these masks on people knows that they can get agitated, which requires sedation. It can decrease venous return, which requires vasopressors. When patients are wearing this mask, they can't eat. And then finally, it's harder to talk to loved ones and the medical team, which just cycles back and increases agitation. And it's difficult to understand what's going on with the patient. Now, this is an older paper. This is the Doshi paper in the Annals of Emergency Medicine 2018, looking at high-velocity nasal insufflation in the treatment of respiratory failure, a randomized clinical trial. Now, this was all comers with respiratory failure, 204 patients, and they got randomized to one of two things, high-velocity therapy at 35 liters per minute or non-invasive positive pressure ventilation at 10 over 5. And here's what they found. Their primary outcome was intubation rate. This was a non-inferiority study, and it turned out that high-velocity therapy was actually non-inferior to non-invasive positive pressure ventilation. Now, there were a few more patients that had respiratory failure with high-velocity therapy compared to non-invasive positive pressure ventilation, but that wasn't the primary outcome of the trial. Now, an important part of the study that I think sometimes gets overlooked is looking at ventilation. And when they looked at high velocity therapy compared to non-invasive positive pressure ventilation, and they looked at the change in PCO2 at 240 minutes, here's the amazing thing. High velocity therapy did just as well as non-invasive positive pressure ventilation. And so again, back to this alveolar ventilation equation, this is a nice construct, I think, for applying at the bedside what it is that we're doing for patients. Inspired volume, think non-invasive positive pressure ventilation, but know that there's a lot of caveats that come with that. I think we oftentimes forget about high velocity therapy, removing dead space. So there you have it, alveolar ventilation. Let me know your thoughts, comments, and questions, and thanks for tuning in. Until next time.